uh, my, my part of this uh, presentation is really focused more on a uh, practical level from uh, a church planning standpoint uh, with what's you know strategic with our priorities and uh, some of us have been a part of some uh, some churches where the the calendar itself um, some of it it feels like the calendar is ruling us rather than us ruling the calendar that there are some things that are always uh, taking place maybe it's from um, things that have become a tradition over the years where this is just the way that it is uh, and you don't want to uh, you don't want to touch it and some of the things that we've uh, maybe, maybe we've inherited or we've tried to implement um, uh, sometimes even successfully so uh, what I just have is a, a list of some questions maybe a checklist of of some things as we're putting together uh, a calendar or as we're uh, either planning in a, in a quarterly or if we're planning uh, in a, annually uh, there are some things that we can add to that and uh, my first point here is just to assess what is most important. And uh, one of the things that we, we know is that uh, we can't always do everything. Uh, and, and a lot of times uh, we have people who have uh, great ideas and they want to see uh, particular things happen and they've got some, maybe even some reasons, but it's hard to do everything for everybody. So it is assessing uh, what is most important. And you know, follow that up by asking the question, what is optional? What are the things that um, if we didn't do blank, if we didn't have um, whatever that would be, if we didn't have vacation Bible school, um, uh, who, who would it matter to? Uh, what, what, what would be missing from that? If we, uh, if we didn't have a, our particular annual um, July 4th event, who would miss it? And it just brings us to a place of asking the questions uh, why we're doing uh, what it is that we're doing. Um, I also ask the question, what does this uh, do for the kingdom of God? And uh, again, I've, I've been a part of uh, some church plants uh, where we've kind of created a calendar from scratch and just trying to, uh, to use some events to connect with a community or to reach out to people. We've also been a part of a few church plants uh, where it, through the church plant that there are, uh, it's, it, it can feel like the calendar is absolutely complete before you've even entered in one thing. And so I think assessing what is most important is pretty key. Um, I put this uh, with that is, uh, uh, you're, you're probably familiar with this, but if we do what we've always done, We'll get what we've always got, and it, and and a lot of times this is what just kind of keeps us uh, just kind of humming along. So um, the other question is, uh, what is optimal? Uh, what's something that no one else in your community is doing? Um, what's something that allows for you to reach people who do not a regular who do not regularly attend your church? And what can your church do better than other churches? And it's keeping these questions close by. Uh, that as you're making a plan and as you're striving to um, uh, re reach out or to, to invite people to some events, uh, that there is some reason for you doing what it is that, what, that you're doing. So assess what's most important. The second part is to uh, anticipate what is most immediate. And um, th there's uh, certain things that are, are pressing. It, it feels like I, I, I really appreciate what Jeff was saying about the, the, the preaching calendar. Um, I always think about that with uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, it, it, and just about, you know, next week, it's going to feel like Easter is around the corner and that we're going to kind of have to do some kind of shift and anticipation of that. And so uh, what's pressing? And um, to be honest, if you're somewhat like me, I, uh, I have things on the calendar that I look really, really forward to. And then I have some other things in the calendar where I don't look as forward to some of those things. There's a couple of things that, that, that come on. And so what are some plans on the calendar that cause pressure? Uh, and what, what are some of those things where you can anticipate uh, just during maybe that stretch or that season or that planning? Um, you know, what's, what's pressing in on you. 
uh, what are some things that require too much time and what are some things that require too much money and so we kind of look at those resources because those resources are what bring us uh, towards uh, recognizing uh, the investment and and that investment is what causes us to uh, determine if we're going to continue to do that so what is what is pressing on us and then i think it's important to ask the other side of that question is what is passing uh, we, we all have uh, the seasons of the calendar where uh, we know that anticipation of what we'll say Easter or uh, Christmas that, uh, yeah, this is going to be a busy season, but we're going to get through this busy season. And so uh, what, what are some things that may have a cost up front, but you recognize that they have a payoff that, it, it, in other words, we're, we're doing this, yes, it's going to be a lot, but it's going to be worth it that we can, we can look forward to that. Um, and then uh, what are some things on the calendar that are seasonal? And we're talking about the, the actual calendar of the things that uh, can come and go. But then there's also some things that uh, are in the life of your church that are seasonal. Maybe you're going through a particular season in your church where um, you're, you're reaching out to people or you're seeing new people come or you're seeing uh, new members. And so because you're seeing uh, let's say more guests that are attending your church, then that means that there is a time to invest in a, a greater emphasis on um, maybe membership classes or meet the pastor or some other things that you're going to need to add to the calendar in order to uh, see those things uh, begin to, um, to, to have a payoff. And so what are the things on the calendar that are just seasonal? What are some things in the life in the church that are seasonal? And then Here's kind of the, my last point is, uh, and this is the hardest one for me, uh, truthfully, um, analyze what has the greater impact. Um, what is strategic? And I know, I know we use words in church a lot of times like uh, strategy and relevant, and I use those words a lot as well. Uh, but when we're thinking about what has the greater impact, um, we, we see that there is uh, something that leaves a mark. Um, what strategic, how did the preparation for this event impact our church? And we have some people uh, who are uh, involved in so many things um, that it's not actually the, the healthiest thing for them to make this thing go through. And uh, is, this a, is, this a, is this a strategic thing? Uh, that allows for that. So what's the impact? What is what is the preparation costing uh, for our church? What is uh, all of the um, an investment of that? Uh, and then how did the purpose of this event impact our community? Um, we want to be able to know these things. I, I had uh, uh, so many different uh, opportunities with uh, the, the church that we were planning in New York to uh, do regular um uh, community outreach events. And so we would uh, do a, 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 an event in the fall that was kind of an emphasis on a fall festival. And we would do another event that was at Easter. And we were trying to invite people to uh, come to a, uh, like an Easter egg hunt on, on this particular uh, Saturday. And then uh, we would have other, uh, and the idea was for them to come to Saturday, and then we were going to invite them uh, to, to church on Sunday. And um, over and over again, every year, in, incrementally, it seemed like we were seeing more and more people that were attending this Easter egg hunt. And there were fewer and fewer people that were attending our worship service. And then we, uh, on, or, for, or for Easter Sunday. And so then we began to really have to examine, so what exactly is our purpose for this event? Uh, are we trying to provide something for the community? And eventually we had a shift uh, at our church where we were way more intentional on inviting people to come to our church for the Easter egg, I mean, for, for the Easter Sunday service. And then we were willing to join with other uh, community leaders that were maybe doing a, a separate Easter egg hunt and, and trying to just understand what our purpose was for that. And then uh, how did the planning of the event impact our goals for our church? Uh, that we wanna be able to see that what, what we're doing matters and that there's an impact uh, that happens, which, 
which leads me to uh, this last stretch of questions is, um, uh, w w was it a distraction? Uh, what, what are some of the distractions that, that we've dealt with? And, and I feel like I've had uh, a lot of those things where uh, because um, when the calendar uh, or the events can kind of run on autopilot, uh, I found that some of these things actually de deter us from, um, from accomplishing what we wanted to accomplish. Um, what, what did this, and, and the answer is not always that, it's not, the answer is not always yes, but if there was a distraction, what did this keep us from doing? Uh, what, what, what was missing from this that kind of prevented us from doing something else? Um, was this the best use of our resources? And, uh, you know, in, in a lot of the churches that I've been in, uh, re resources are at a premium. Uh, we, we don't, we don't, we don't, we can't afford to make very many mistakes. We can't afford to, uh, to, to do a lot of trial and error. We, we got to try to do it right the first time is, was this the best use of our resources? And then to ask the gigantic question that I know all of you deal with is, uh, does this need to be done again? And it's the easiest thing uh, in the world to just kind of pencil it in and say, well, we're going to do this every year from now on. Uh, but really asking the question, and maybe that's with your team, maybe that's with a couple of other individuals, um, does, does this need to be done again? Is this something that, uh, that we're going to continue? Is this something that, that we want to uh, make sure that uh, no matter what else that this happens? And, and um these are just real honest questions, and and I've go I go I've gone through these uh, periodically uh, by myself. I've gone through these periodically uh, with the team, and uh, and I appreciate the way that uh, several of you have talked about sharing some of these questions with your team or or getting the feedback from your team, uh, because there have been times where I thought that uh, there there was a successful event. But I was not weighing just how much this costs us in terms of our uh, our, our team and and their, that they were tired, that they were spent, uh, that they were frustrated, uh, that they that they really um, uh, you, you know were were not even passionate <laughs> about what it is that we were doing. So I think that uh, asking a series of questions that bring us to a place of understanding what is strategic. Uh, this provides for a much more uh, a, a healthier outlook for our planning and a desire to make sure that we're doing all that we're doing uh, for the kingdom of God.